Hello friends and welcome to my kitchen. We're going to be painting these haunted houses today. Well, really just the one on the top left. These are the colors that we used and I will have them listed in the description below. The stone that I chose is kind of ovally shaped. It's flatter on the bottom. We're going to use three colors to paint the base coat. It's going to be yellow, lipstick red from Deco Art, and I'm going to choose the ultramarine blue for the sky. We're going to blend these in together and it's going to take those three coats probably for complete coverage. So we'll blend each layer as we go. And that will also give you practice as you're moving along. We'll start with the lightest color at the base. And this line is simply a reference line for me to know that that's the highest that I want to go. So I will go over it in case I change my grass line and go make little hills or something. I don't want any stone to show through. So give it a good coat with that yellow. While it's wet, switch your sponge and you're going to go into the red and blend it down into the yellow. This doesn't have to be perfect, but for it to work in the end, you do need it to be blended. You don't want any dark lines showing. I'm going back to the yellow sponge and I'm blending back up into the red. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to do a couple more layers. You hear the roosters in the background? I'm outside at my mom's house. We're way out in the country and it's so awesome here. So there's the first one. We're going to go with another sponge. You always want to switch sponges as you switch colors. And this is that ultramarine blue. And I do want it to come down about one third of the rock. You don't want to go down too low because it does make it hard to see the top of the roof and the top of the tree. I'm going back in with the red, but I only put paint on half of the red as I blend it into the blue. I don't want to drag too much of that blue paint down into the red and the yellow. Now that blue paint pretty much covers on the first coat. There may be a couple little holes that we'll have to touch up as we go. Back to the yellow, getting that second coat on. Back to the red to blend it in. Look at all that practice you're going to be getting while you do this. And it doesn't take long at all to do. It's kind of fun and relaxing. Here I'm touching up any little holes where the paint didn't cover. I'm going to clean up the backside a little bit. And that's the completed product. So I wash my palette and I wash my sponges right now. And we're going into the black paint. So here we go. Use a bigger brush than I did. I actually used a number two liner. Um, it's a number two round and not the greatest thing to paint in a larger area. But I didn't have another brush here with me so I just kept going with what I had. Once you finish painting in the ground you're going to start working on the house. And the house I try my best not to make them straight because they look a little bit better when they're crookedy. It's kind of hard for me to do that, but I'm getting better at it as I keep painting these. You can see the simple triangle roof, pulling it over. I left room for the door, the little window up at the top. I'm trying not to make it really straight right here. This is the tree. I usually branch it off into two main branches and put a broken branch down at the bottom. You could set an owl up on that branch if you wanted to. I've done that before. I don't do it on this one though. I'm going to paint a yellow moon up at the top. At the end I do put glitter on it to make it shine. You can use a little bit of gold or just a shiny glitter. Either one will look really nice. 
I decided I wanted to add a couple more windows next to the door so I'm just using a yellow pencil to highlight the areas that I would like to go over with later. This is the sidewalk. It gets a little wider as it comes towards you, kind of inviting you to come in. I'm just planning what I'm going to do. I am going to paint a little highlight here to separate the roof from the house and I'm going to make this window bigger. And I'm going to make the door a little bit bigger. Okay, now to fix these windows, I'm going to go ahead and just use pure yellow and fill it in. It's going to take a couple coats to cover the black. And because it's harder to cover with yellow, I'm going to add a tiny bit of white to this. That'll give it more pigment for coverage. And then I'll go back over that with the pure yellow and it'll stand out really bright. Look like the lights are on inside the house. I'm going to make this more of a flat window on the bottom so that it's not just a round one. See how you can change it up as you go along. As you take a look at your house, you may say, oh wait, I want to change that a little bit, and you still can. I don't want the inside of the house to be the same colors as the background. It stands out more if you go ahead and make them brighter. And then I can also add a little bit of curtains to the windows. So, got my window bases painted, and now we're going to work on the tree a little bit more. So I'm using my 10-0 liner, and that's so I can make some thinner branches, and I've watered down my paint just a little bit. It's more like an India ink, and that helps me to get these lines thin. And you want to branch them out on the ends. So I put three, four branches. I do overlap them on top of each other to fill in the, the tree and since it's already late in the fall there's no leaves on this tree a couple little sticks down here on the broken branch now I'm going to add a tiny tiny bit of black to the yellow this is what I'm going to be using for the highlights it's kind of like the moon's shining and leaving a little bit of a reflection on some of the edges of things. So I'm putting in the basis of the sidewalk for right now. I will go back in at, towards the end of the video and add a couple cracks to it, make it look a little more broken. The door is going to be open just a little bit. And I leave the back side where the hinges are, a little gap there, and I'll paint two little hinges on right here. And I angle up the bottom of the door and the top of the door so that it does look like it's open. I'm going to straighten it out with some bright yellow. This is where I put a little bit of grass strokes so that it's not just a flat edge. It, you don't want the lawn to look like it's kept really, really nice. And I put little dots on top of some of the longer stems. Kind of look like flowers or weeds that are in bloom. It gives us a little bit more interest. That yellow had dried, so I added just a little bit more to clean those up. Now along the windows I'm just going around each edge with the black paint to straighten them out just a little bit. And remember my paint's a little bit thinned down with water right now. Sorry I'm moving my rock a whole lot but I hold the rocks in my hand when I'm painting. Makes it easier for me. And I'm adding lines to the windows. You could make it just 
a line up and down and across. I'm putting two lines across these windows and one going down the center. You could have put some curtains in first, but I didn't, so I'm going to put the curtains in and then I'll have to go back over those lines. So if you want to make it easier for yourself, go ahead and put those curtains in now and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm putting the moon's highlight on the tree and on the house, all the places that the moon might be shining. This will also help the branches of your tree to show up in the darker area. They don't have to be perfect. You don't have to even cover all of the branches. Just do as many as you want so that it looks the way you would like it to look. And this little dot is the beginning of a spider web. So I hook the spider web to the tree with two little strands of the web and then I just made a semicircle basically uh, starting from the center and pulling them towards the house. And now I'm going in and kind of drawing semicircles, all of them about the same distance and that will make the spider web. Again, they really don't have to be perfect. But it turns out pretty cool in the end. I do leave a little gap at the ends next to the house. And this little dot is going to have four legs hooked to it. I know they have eight legs, but eh. It showed up pretty good with the four and it looked like a spider, so I just left it like that. Here comes a little jack-o'-lantern. I put a little bit of white with the orange so I could cover up the black. I go back over it with the bright orange. Now that the moon is dry, I'm adding another coat of yellow while I had the yellow out and I'm mixing more of the black and white to make those black and the yellow to make those curtains and it's just to kind of make it look like it's closed a little bit leaving one part of it open I'm just painting right over those black lines and then I redo the black lines see if you had put the curtains in first you wouldn't have had to have done the black lines twice Sometimes I just change things up as I go along, and it's easy enough to do. There we go. Now the pumpkin is dry, so I'm going to put some more bright orange on there. Putting on a black stem. That plane's really loud. I'm sorry. At nighttime, they fly the military planes around here, and sometimes they have really strong engines. Here I'm adding a little bit of the yellow highlight in between each of those lines on the pumpkin. Two triangle eyes and a little O for the mouth. Tiny white dots in there. I put them so that they were looking up towards the spider web. Makes it look like he's not too happy about the spider being there. Now this little circle is going to be followed by a half circle underneath and then you connect them together. Kind of smooth that out, and you've got a cat. All he needs is a couple little ears and a tail. And you have a black cat looking at the moon. I was dabbing off a little extra paint when I 
put those strokes down in the grass. And then we wanted to add a little bit more grass around the kitty cat. Got to put the grass on the other side too. I like pulling the strokes towards me. It's easier for me to start with a wider blade at the bottom and thinner at the top. So once again, I'm picking up that rock, holding on to it. I like to make the grass a little bit longer next to the tree because that's usually one place that doesn't get mowed that often. A few more dots to give them interest. Those little dots make a lot of difference in the way it looks. One more coat of yellow up here. And now I'm putting on a little bit of hologram. It's a glitter paint. It really didn't turn out real glittery on this yellow. I should have just used a yellow glitter or a, maybe even a metallic paint. I think it would have looked better. That's the hologram paint that I use by Folk Art. It just doesn't pull out much color on the yellow. On the orange, it would have done a beautiful glistening color, but because it's hologram, it pulls the color out from underneath. I'm using pure gold, and I'm putting on kind of a thick little dot on the door handle. That's the only place that I use the gold. We'll be adding some finishing touches now. I'm going to use the yellow mixed with a little bit of the black to do a little bit of more outlining on the house to separate things. This will kind of separate the roof from the house. I'm going to fix up the sidewalk to make it look a little more cracked. So I'm going to break that sidewalk and kind of stretch it out so it looks like it's broken and cracking here and there just by adding some of that black and yellow paint. I decided I want to know another window so I'm going to put one on the door here. It's yellow and white. Going back in with the yellow. going to make a couple lines and then the windows done I'm going to finish off the bottom of the rock with the black paint and I'm taking a look at it now and seeing what else needs to be done there's a little bit of black paint right here on the side of the house so I got the red and the yellow out and I'm kind of blending back and forth just till I get the right shade so you can't tell that I did a touch up. And there's how you're going to fix anything that goes into your faded background. Here's a few little lines this just kind of give the indication of maybe stones or little bumps in the ground. Kind of separating the tree from the ground. This is all just touch up mode. I'm going to completely cover up that line right there on the sidewalk to make it look actually broken. And I think I'm going to touch up this window a little bit. I wanted it a little bit yellower. It just seemed kind of dark. These are all things you don't have to fix. You don't have to do them. You may have done them right the first time. But I always go back over when I'm finished with my stone, see what needs to be touched up or changed to make it look a little better. And here's all of my samples that I've done. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Remember to hit subscribe and like, and that way you'll get notifications of any new videos as I put them out.